So, I first want to thank Rabbi Johnny for all the effort involved in organizing the two shuls together. And everything we're saying about unity, we're acting in being together as one big community. I also want to thank Rabbanit Shani Terrigan for a phenomenal short video that I urge you to watch. It's from Mizrahi about Kina 27. Much of what I'm saying today comes from her, but no one can say it like her. I'll be using the art scroll. Uh, uh, I believe it's on page 284, 285. I'll be using some of the translation for, for time purposes. I'll, I'll just use the English. So let's pause for a moment. Imagine it's a dark, gloomy, cold winter night from wherever you are from. London, New York, Toronto, January. You're walking downtown. The streets are covered with slush. And somewhere in the distance, you see some steam coming up. And you know that often it's probably a sewer. And as you keep walking and getting closer to it, you notice there's a figure, there's a person lying next to and hugging that sewer for warmth. As you get closer to the person, you bend over, you reach in your pocket, you might have some food, maybe some money you're going to hand over to them. And all of a sudden you're in shock. Some facial features of this person resembles someone from your past. Someone who many years ago you knew in their days of glory. They come from a great family. But now this person in front of you is so disheveled. They're in total disarray. Could it be? Could it be that this is the same person and just that they had such a terrible downturn in their life, could this be the person you once knew? What would you do? This is precisely what the Khalir, as Rabbi Wise said so well in his genius, this is the picture that he puts us right into in Kina 27, as Bimlot. He uses the alphabetical format to describe Yirmiyahu as he's walking out of the Beit HaMikdash. And who is this beggar that he meets? I'll start reading on 285 letter bet. As Yirmiyahu, the son of Chilkiyahu, departed from the temple, he met a woman of beautiful features, Yafat Toar, who was filthy, manuvelet, disheveled, dirty. It's on page 283, if you've got an Ashkenaz one, a um, great one, and it's... Uh, Thank you. 284, the Ivrita, 285, the English. If you've got the Tzvah one. Yes. And so Remiao confronts her, and he says in letter Gimel, I command you in the name of God and man to reveal whether you're one of the demons or of humankind. Your graceful appearance resembles flesh and blood, but the terror and awe etched on your features is so bad, it is almost not human. Don't you recognize me, she says? Do you know who I am? I am the daughter of Yerushalayim, the representative of Yerushalayim and the Jewish people. I am the daughter of one and of three and of 60 and of 12 and of 71. I want to pause and ask you, unless you looked ahead, do any of these numbers mean something to you? Who would, could she be the daughter of three, for example? Avot, Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, 12. The Shvatim, right, 60, 
is the 60 repo, the 60 ten thousands, the 600,000 number representing us triumphantly marching out of Yitziat Mitzrayim and beautifully, in a beautiful fashion, organized around Harsina as we're receiving the Torah. And 71 is the Sanhedrin. Think of beautiful Yerushalayim, the Beit HaMikdash, the Sanhedrin sitting in Lishkat HaGazit, a perfect system of justice. These are my parents. This is where I come from. What are we seeing here? How does this disheveled woman see herself? What is her self-image? That's right. It's remarkable that even in this terrible state of detachment from Hashem, this destitute woman, this beggar at the sewer, did not forget her lofty pedigree, where she comes from. She still sees herself as part of the chain. And this, of course, is precisely what Yirmiyahu latches onto and uses as the key to try to help her unleash her shackles. And he encourages her to reawaken some beauty of her past. And so he says to her, in that case, if you were once so beautiful, you still have it inside of you. You can do tshuva. But Yerushalayim answers, look at me. How can I? Look at what I've done. Look at what's around me. Look at what's happened because of my sins. Look at letter Chaf on the left side. But how can I rejoice, she says. How can I raise my voice in song? Behold, my babes are delivered into the hands of my tormentors. Can any of us not at this moment see the beautiful eyes of Kefir and Ariel and their mother as she was dragged with her children into Aza? My prophets in Ladr Lamed were beaten and their blood flowed. My kings, my princes, we have over here the father of Nathanael Yang, Hashem Yikom Damo, our prince, and my priests, Itai Chen, Hashem Yikom Damo, we all walk by the posters with his beautiful face. We're exiled and below, behold, they're now in shackles. So the woman says to Yirmiyahu, Yirmiyahu, I can't pray. I'm too broken. My sins are too great. Please, you Yirmiyahu, you daven for me, le'elokecha to your God. Daven so intensely, she says, that look at the letter Ayin, until God himself says enough and saves me from sword and captivity. So Yirmiyahu listens to the woman. That's what he does when he's watching this friend at the sewer. He listens to her. Read letter Tzadi or letter Pei. Yirmiyahu prayed in supplication before his creator. Who oh, you who are full of compassion, Male Rachamim, pity us as a father would pity his son. Oi! And the next sentence could be Yirmiyahu, it could be Hashem. You have to look at the Gemara in Brachot. Hashem cries, how does a father feel when he has exiled his son? And woe unto the son who's absent from his father's table. And finally, she says, the woman says to Yirmiyahu, if Hashem, my father in heaven, will not answer, then go to my fathers on earth. And so in the letter Kuf, arise, Yirmiyahu, why should you be silent? Go summon the patriarchs in Aaron and Moshe. Let these shepherds come and arouse lamentations because the wolves of the night have torn the lamb to pieces. And Yirmiyahu and Sheen roared at the cave of Machpelah. He growled like a lion. And finally, for time's sake, I'll skip to Hashem's response. At the bottom, God answered, what can I do for you, my sons? This is Gezerah. It's an irrevocable decree. 
The temple has been laid waste because my beloved ones have faltered. Beautiful play on word, Lehimaed, which will soon be turned to Moed. And then return them as in the days of Oah, of your Teshivain. Who is speaking here? This is a very magic, a very key sentence. Who is speaking? I think it could be Hashem speaking to us. Return them, return my children, as in the days of yore. It could be Yermiyahu and the Avot and Moshe and Aaron screaming out to Hashem, Teshivain, return them. Return your children, return the captives. And of course, it could be the Kalir giving us a voice and us screaming out to Hashem Teshivim. We feel so helpless that we need you, Hashem, to take the first step to return them. And so in conclusion, I felt this kina was written for October 7th and beyond. When have we ever in our lives had anything to do with people who were so disfigured beyond recognition. Secondly, Shivya, captivity repeats in many sentences. And I want to conclude with a take home message. And that is, if we learn from this beggar, and if we hang on tightly to higher identity, we remember who we are. We're one big family. We share the Echad. We share the Shlosha, the three fathers. We are all, where the words, Shnei Masar, and Echad, Shnei Masar, and we're all children of the Sanhedrin, the Shivim Vachad the beautiful system of justice and caring for one another. And if we remember and hang on tight to that identity to who we are, then the Paitan promises are, I send you, and I really urge you to look at Rav Sachs, Zecher Tzadik Livracha's definition of Moed in a beautiful essay on Parsha Teimor. It's called Holy Times in which it defines Moed as a dedicated time in which we feel the closeness of the Shekhinah and are bathed in the radiance of Hashem's love. Bimeravi Amenu. Amen. As bim lot sefek ya fakit ilza, Hen er lim tsa ku chutsa ben ichil kiyao me amon ke yatsa yishay